knows what's going on, and he knows exactly what he has to do about it. And it's greater than anything we could think of to do. He is preparing things. And I always say, God, sometimes things look worse before they get better because God is setting things in motion for his plan. And we have to trust him that he has a plan because he does. He has a plan, and we're not going to worry and fret about it. I would like tonight for all of us to stand as we pray over our nation tonight. And there's many people out there. I don't know how many people are listening to this by live streaming. I don't even know. We're not doing live streaming right now, but I know this will get posted on the Facebook account and on two or three places that Lynn puts it. And I want all those people that are going to be listening to this also to agree with us in prayer right now for our nation. God, we look to you, Lord God, the almighty God that created the heavens and earth, spoke them into existence, created all of mankind, all the animals, all the stars in the sky and everything. God, you are so almighty, Lord, there is nothing that is impossible with you. Nothing is impossible. And we know, God, that you have this matter in your hands, Lord. We know that we don't always understand exactly how you're working or how you're going to work this out, Lord. But we trust you that you are, Lord. Because according to your word, Lord God, you are with us, Lord, and you will preserve and keep your people, Lord. We are your bride, Lord. We are the ones, Lord, that you are coming back for, Lord. And we know, God, that you love us with it all love that we cannot even understand or comprehend it is so great and so mighty and we know lord that you're not going to cause your people to suffer any harm lord we just ask right now in the name of jesus we come against these powers of darkness and all these racist spirits and these other spirits that are invaded our land lord and we just declare and decree right now in the name of jesus that they are bound and they have to cease and desist what they're doing they have to leave this nation now according to your word you have given us all power and authority over them, and we exercise this power now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give us liberty. Amen. Give us liberty once again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Okay, you can be seated. Tonight we are still speaking on the Holy Spirit. We talked about it last week. The Holy Spirit is something that I believe that that we all need to think seriously about. We have a portion of the Holy Spirit when we're saved, but God has sent the Holy Spirit to baptize his people with power. Many people just think that all they have to seek for is tongues. That is not the reason the Holy Spirit is given, is for just the gift of tongues. There's many gifts that he gives whenever he comes, but the greatest gift of all is the power that he gives his people to go forth and to minister to other people throughout the earth. And this power that is given by the Holy Spirit is something that is given to those that will seek his face. But it's a gift. And you know, I just can't help but think that whenever people refuse a gift that God wants to give us, I believe we're walking on dangerous ground. You know, I just believe, you know, how would you feel if you had a special gift to give somebody you love, that you love dearly and you gave them a gift, and they said, oh, no, I don't need that. Thank you. Wow, how would that make you feel? Terrible. Well, you know, there's a, somebody asked me last week at the end of the service, well, I'm not really sure what my gift is, what I should be doing. But you know what? Paul makes it real clear. I'm going to read a scripture, and I believe this was given to me especially for you, Terry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, many of us sometimes don't really know what we should be doing. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing for a long time. I just learned to just try to walk with God the best way that I knew how. But that's the best way for him to lead and guide you into your gift. Because he gives us at birth, before we're ever born, he decides what gift and what ability you're going to have. And what you're going to do in this earth while we're here. So we're going to read, this is kind of a long reading. And it's also in uh, the New Living Translation. So I think it'll make it pretty clear. But this is Paul speaking to the churches that are grown. And he says, just as our bodies, he was trying to make it really clear for them. And that's why I'm reading in the New Transla Living Translation, but to make this very plain to you tonight. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many in many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. So he wants the body of Christ to be one unit. He wants us to be bound together in love and unity in everything that we do. So we all belong to each other, and in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing different things well. See, he knows, he knows what he's put inside of you even more than you know yourself. 
whenever you were a tiny baby. I used to love to pray for the babies at the hospital. Whenever I was a chaplain there, I would always go in and pray for the babies, and I always prayed that the gifts and the abilities that God had given these ch children, that the parents would recognize them early on and help encourage them in those gifts. Because God has put things in every single one of us that is very unique. Do you know that there is no two people that are absolutely identical? And I think from the beginning of Adam and Eve, can you imagine a God that has so many different abilities to make people different, that many people in the world today? Think of just the people that are in the world today, much less all the people that have been before us from the beginning of creation, that every one of us is uniquely different. Even identical twins are not truly identical. They might look alike, but there are always some things that are just a little bit different. So God has given us different gifts for doing different things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. And if your gift is serving others, now everybody can do this. Serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is encouraging others, be encouraging, be encouraged. If it is giving, give generously. And if God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. You know whenever you're a good leader. If people are following you, you're a leader. If they're not following you, you're not. If people begin to ask you questions how to do things, it's a good indication you're a leader because they look at you as somebody that might know what to tell them to do. And if you have the gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Don't just pretend to love others, but really love them. Really genuinely love them. And if you cannot love others, pray that God will give you a portion of that gift to love others as he loves us. Because love is really important. And when we, when we consider others better than ourselves, then we know we have come to the place of being able to love. So uh, hate that which is wrong, hold tightly to what is good, love each other with genuine affection, and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but we work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Yes. Do it with great joy. Yes. Don't do it with, the, oh, I have to do this today. <laughs> no, it, God is not pleased with people that draw back anyway. He wants us to do everything joyfully and fervently and lovingly. Praise God. So rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. So if you see somebody else that has need, be quick to be able to help that person with their need, whatever it might be. They might come to you with a problem. It says, the Bible says, for us to mourn with those that mourn and rejoice with those that rejoice. So kind of take it upon your heart to help, help them, encourage them to get out of their problem, whatever they're in. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Have you ever run across people that no matter what you say, they know it all? <laughs> it's not fun talking to people like that. Never pay back evil with evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see that you are honorable. Do that which you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. What it says, the vengeance is my, I will repay, saith the Lord. We're not supposed to get revenge. We're not supposed to seek revenge. We're supposed to just pray and love people. Remember the things that drive people to do evil things is our enemy of the soul. It is our enemy that came from the very pits of hell. It is Satan himself, the one that sends his demons into the world to try and create havoc and destroy things and persecute and to kill people. It's Satan that does that, and he puts his spirit in people's hearts to do these things. So we need to come against Satan, not against the individual, because the individual is one that Christ died for. The individual is somebody that God wants to save. He wants to lift them out of this and he wants to save them. So we can't just come against him. We need to come against the evil spirits that are behind him. So you can do, um, and then do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. You know, so many times when I run across people that 
uh, are telling me about some argument that they got into and how they were justified in their opinion, this and that. You've probably all heard it. And I just said, remember, God has called us to peace. Sometimes it's better to just keep your mouth shut and let them win in order to keep peace. We don't have to always be the winners. So we never have to take revenge. We leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if you, our enemies, are hungry, feed them. And if they are thirsty, now this is the word of God. It's not my words. This is God's word that I'm reading here. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. And in doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. So all we have to worry about is getting up every day and ask the Lord to lead us somebody that needs our help today, and you are doing what you can in the body of Christ. These are Some of these are simple things that we have to do that Paul is encouraging the body of Christ to do. We don't all have to be missionaries to Africa. We don't have to always be missionaries to China. We don't always have to be preachers. We don't have to be teachers even. We will do whatever God leads us to do and puts in our heart to do. We all have different functions and many of these functions. Look how we were so blessed tonight with Deanna and Jean. I mean, you know, and they, they, their talent has been in storage for quite a while now. And we want this to get out. I said, I want you to be blessed and, and do the work that God's called you to do for the rest of your days. And I always pray that even over myself. I said, Lord, let my strength, strength be at least until the end of my days, that I might continue to do what you've called me to do. And then let me go peaceably. Amen. No lingering. Amen. No lingering. Amen. No. Like that. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the Corinthian church, they had a lot of problems. They had received a lot of God's gifts but they didn't have a lot of teaching behind it. And you know, the gifts of God are no indication of how spiritual you are. A lot of people think that because they can prophesy or because they can do this or because they can do that, they can have the gift of healing for people, that they're somebody great. They're not any greater than anybody else because only God is the one that gives these gifts. This God is the one that has given you the gift to do the things that you're able to do. So there's no place for jealousy, there's no place for envy, and there's no place for feeling proud or lifted up because of what you're able to do, because you won't be able to do it long. If you start getting into pride, we know what happened to Satan. Yeah. Satan was one of the glorious angels in heaven, one of the highest angels in heaven. And look what happened to him because he got lifted up in his pride and began to think he was somebody great. Wow. He got cast out of there in a hurry. Yeah. So God will not allow us to get puffed up or in pride over anything that we're able to do, we have to realize that any of our abilities that we have, we have these abilities only because God gave them to me. I think this woke me up even more so at a time whenever my handicapped daughter, years ago, whenever we were in business and I was working late, because when you own your own business, I'll tell you, you work later than anybody else and you get paid the least. <laughs> if, if anybody has been in business, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I was up until late at night trying to get a job done that was due the next day. And it was now reaching close to 11 o'clock. And uh, several times during the evening while I was working, my daughter had called me. Now, she forgets things easily. She takes a lot of medication, and she can't really remember things well. So she kept calling me and asking me this one question. And I answered her question. I can't remember what it was now. But it's something simple for me, but it was difficult for her. And I realized that everybody is not on the same plane, mentally, physically, or in any other way. But God loves us all equally the same. And he knows exactly what we're capable of and what we're not capable of. So never belittle anybody else because they're not capable of doing what you can do. It doesn't work that way with the Lord. So anyway, she kept calling me off and on all night. And finally, I kept saying I had to get this job done. And I finally told her after about probably the... I don't know, maybe the 10th time she called or something, I said, Kathy, I said, it's late at night, honey, you need to go to bed. You get to bed, and tomorrow, if this is still bothering you, you can call me tomorrow. But tonight, go to bed. You need to get your sleep, and I have work I need to do. Well, she called me one more time after that. And after I answered her, I just sat down at the table there where I was working, and I just began to cry. And I said, God, why do I have to put up with this? And you know what he said to me? something that changed my life forever. He 
She said, would you rather be Kathy? Think about that. Think about that. Whenever somebody comes to you that is hurting, somebody that needs help, and you're able to help them, and they, and they annoy you because they're so slow or because they talk slow or because they are confused or because they're in fear and you have got it all together. Somebody comes to you for help and you treat them as somebody that's not important. Think about that. Think about that. You could have been them. You could have been them. They could have been in that situation. God made us all differently. And then the end of the scripture came to me when he said that to me. He says, let the weak uphold, let the strong uphold the weak. Let the strong uphold the weak. So anytime you think you're stronger than another person, you are the strong person in that relationship. And because you are the stronger person, you owe that person something. You owe that person something because God has given you a gift of strength that can help them. That's how it works. And then God has changed my life forever after that, and I began to look at life differently. And I've never complained anymore to this day. I have never complained about helping somebody of less intelligence, less abilities, or whatever than me. Because you cannot complain. You do what you can do because God has given you the gift to do it. And if you don't do it, shame on you. Shame on you. And God... I, I believe that you will suffer some kind of retribution if you don't do the things that you know that God has called you to do. So the Corinthian church, they had received a lot of these gifts. And because they were very immature spiritually, they, they were new Christians, and, and Corinth, the land of Corinth at that time, was probably worse even than our San Francisco. I mean, it was just, they had actually prostitution, um, what should I call them? like castles there was a there was a place on a hill that was kind of like a huge temple or so it was a temple and they had prostitution temples both men and women both and people would go there and it was perfectly acceptable to the whole world that was their lifestyle and because they lived on a seacoast people many people came there all the time to partake of all the sin and all the carrying on and the stuff that went on there in Corinth so a lot of these people that had been their background and they had used to doing all of these evil things and so whenever they began to get into the Word of God and try to practice in their church they were still very immature and Paul had a hard time with them he really had a hard time with them I think of probably of all the churches that he founded he had a harder time with them than any others and he's and that's why we have the two books of Corinthians actually there was four there's one of them there's two I think in uh, combined and second Corinthians is combined two Gospels and then there was another one that was another letter that we don't have record of but anyway in all of those he really was trying to help this church to get on their feet and to get going. Well, they all got saved, and they were filled with the Holy Holy Spirit. So God gave them these gifts because the Holy Spirit brings gifts with him. The Holy Spirit is somebody sent from the Father at Jesus' will because Jesus asked the Father to send him to us to help us. And because of that, the Holy Spirit brought all these gifts with him. Well, he gave them generously to people. Well, these people didn't really know how to handle them, how to, how to do this. Many of them just were outdoing, trying to outdo each other. I think their services must sound like they were very chaotic and that they were just everybody trying to outdo another in all the gifts that they had. That's not what the gifts are used for. The gifts are given to edify the body of Christ and to edify one another. So whenever they would do this, it was creating confusion. If somebody was speaking in tongues, somebody else would be speaking in tongues and one trying to be louder than the other to outdo the other one and prophesying the same way or whatever that they did. So it's just Paul had to try and set them all straight concerning these things. So Paul tells us in Romans uh, 11, 29, that the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So the gifts are not a sign of our spirituality. We know that. Sometimes a person can backslide spiritual. They still have spiritually, but they still have that gift. And many times, many preachers can continue to preach for a long time, even if they are in sin. Uh, so we can't, it is because, and that, that leads people astray whenever that happens. But the gifts and callings of God, so maybe if God gave you a gift a long time ago, you haven't used that gift for a long time, it's still lying dormant inside of you because that gift is yours forever. God will never take that gift away from you. He will never take that potential ability away from you because he gave it to you before you were ever born, when you were still, your mother was carrying you in her belly. 
you are still, you had that gift even then. And as you grow and mature, that gift develops. And once you have it, it will never be taken away from you. And once you get back to God, that gift will be right there again for you to use. And many people, sometimes they do things that are sinful or something wrong, and people know that they have this gift over here. And they think, how can a person like that do that when they have such a, a supernatural gift? And that's the reason, because the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So it is no sign of spirituality. So you can't say, well, that person is really spiritual because I've heard them preach before. That person is really spiritual because I've heard them sing. Wow, they sung on such an anointing. It was tremendous. That does not mean they're a really super spiritual person. The thing that makes us spiritual is a lot of time with God in the presence of God, praying in the spirit, praying uh, to God. And even in our, if you can't pray in the spirit, just praying, period. And spending time with God. And another way you can spend time with God is in his word. Yes. So you read the word and you re get the word in your heart. It's the same as spending time with God. Because we've learned many times that the word is the same as Jesus. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. He was the word in heaven before he ever came to earth. And whenever he came to earth, this written word is the same as Jesus being in your presence. So whenever you spend time in the word, you're spending time with Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Whenever we don't receive the gifts that God gives us or we don't exercise them or put them to use, sometimes I believe we grieve the Holy Spirit. We grieve the Holy Spirit because He wants to just He just wants to give us, give us, give us, give us gifts and give us more gifts. As, and He has so much more for us, more than the mind can even understand or fathom. In Ephesians 4:30 it says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. For whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is one that seals our salvation. Praise God. He's the one that seals our salvation. The Holy Spirit is very powerful and mighty. And we need him in our lives. And we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The name of this message was the necessity of the Holy Spirit. Some people think it's just optional to either receive it or not to receive it. But we really need to consider it as something that God wants us to have because he knows that we are going to face trials and things like what we're facing right now in our nation. He knows that we're going to face things that could be even worse than this on farther down the line. He knows these things are going to come. And if we have this anointing and power of the Holy Spirit in us, we're going to be able to help others and lead many people into the kingdom of God because of the power that he brings us. Not because of our own power in our flesh. In our flesh, we can do nothing. Anything that's works that are done in the flesh without God is going to perish and burn anyway. They're going to all be dry up. They're going to be the chaff that's going to be burned up at the end times. So it's only things that are done for Christ that is going to last. And we need to know, and it's the Holy Spirit in us that's going to cause us to be able to do these things for Christ. So I, I wanted to also tell you the little parable here about the talents. This will give you an idea of what happens to people that never use any of the gifts that God gave him. The gifts are like these talents that this man left when he went on a long journey. In Matthew 25, 14 through 18, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them the goods. And he said, and he gave unto them, one unto them, he gave five talents, and to another two talents, to another and then one to another, and to every man according to his several ability. See, God gives different amount of gifts and talents to each one according to our ability to be able to use these. He never requires more of us than we're able to do. He knows what our abilities are because he gave them to us. So he's never going to require us to do what somebody else could do if that's not what our gift or talent is. He only gives you, only requires of you what he's given of you. So here he gave one five, he gave one two, and he gave somebody else just one. So he is the one that knows how much to give each person. And straightway he took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and he made them other five talents. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. He was afraid. He was afraid. He was afraid that he would lose it, and so he hid it because he didn't want to take a chance on losing it. So the one that had received the one talent was afraid to do anything with it. Fear will cause you to not do what God has called you to do. Fear many times will cause you to draw back 
not be bold enough to do things. And sometimes the things that God will call you to do or lay on your heart to do might seem foolish to other people. And I remember God told me one time when I was a young Christian, he said, don't worry about what other people think of you. When I tell you to do something, you just do it. Just do it and trust me. And so I tried to live like that. And sometimes I did some weird, silly things that a lot, a lot of people thought was weird and silly. But I tried to be obedient to God. And maybe sometimes it wasn't God. Maybe sometimes it was just me. But anyway, I tried to be very obedient. And I remember one example was, he said, if I tell you, like I was sitting beside kind of a, a chair against the wall, and he said, if I tell you suddenly to take your arm and bang it on the wall, I just want you just to do it and not question me. In other words, God wants us to get to the place where we trust him so much that no matter what anybody else thinks about us, we'll be obedient to him because this is the only way we're gonna get through the end times. The end times are gonna be lawless, terrible times. The Bible says there's gonna become a great falling away, but the church is gonna rise and shine brighter than ever. Yes. So if the church is gonna rise and shine brighter and we're gonna have all this chaos going on in the world, we're gonna to have to be strong people. We're going to have to realize what God, that who our God is and know who he is yeah. and lift him up and encourage other people and say, God is our God. Whatever that woman called me, that's the first thing I told her. I said, do you think any of this stuff that's going on that God didn't know about it? Right. I said, God knows everything that's going on. He sees it all, and he already has a plan. I said, don't worry. I said, he didn't going to reveal his plan necessarily to you or to me, but he already has a plan, and he does. He has a plan in your life, and he has a plan for our, our nation, he has a plan for our nation. We're not gonna be just back like we were before. We are gonna be stronger than ever because the church has been praying and prayer always brings greater success. So we have to stay in there and keep praying and asking God to see us through all of these times. We are gonna be a nation that is no longer going to have any, any kind of um, prejudice. Prejudice, that's the word I was trying to think of. You know, whether you realize it or not, the, our nation has had a lot of prejudice. Our forefathers instigated slavery way back when, and because of that, it has still creeped through the land. It has never been totally gone. There have still been areas in our country where there has been prejudice, and because of that, these people have a right now to be concerned about it and to say, we want our rights. We want equal rights. You know what, I know good and well that if that, if George Floyd had been a white man, that would never have happened to him. You know, we have to realize what these people have gone through and what they are going through. And even though I don't condone uh, the burning at all, the destruction and everything else that's going on, and I believe that there are other factors, there's other people that are coming in and taking advantage of these, uh, of these people and they're doing these things which is not part of the original group that really wanted to do these protests. But God is going to deal with that also. He's going to separate. He is separating now the sheep from the goats. And he's going to continue to separate us even more so as time goes on. So uh, the story that goes along with these talents, I want to read some of this to you. Uh, in Matthew 25, 24 to 23, it says, Then the servant with the one bag of silver, this is whenever the, the man came back that was on this far journey, and this is speaking of the Lord when he returns, then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. He says, but the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. Call them wicked and lazy. Wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I had harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, take the money from the servant and give it to the one with the 10 bags of silver. Remember the one that had five and doubled his money? Give it to the one with the 10 bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given and they will have an abundance. If you use the gifts and talents that God has given you and you do them well, God will increase your ability. Yes. You can actually increase yes. what you know how to do. You can increase, that's why on a job or something, yes. you will get better and better at it. If you do everything to the best of your ability, you increase your ability to do more. And you also will be given more talents as you use you, your talent and your gifts for God. God will give you more, praise God. So uh, uh, 
Let me start here. Where was I? So to those who use well, they are given. Even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. An abundance. That means lots. Okay, lots. So from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now, throw this useless servant. This is God speaking. Now, throw this useless servant into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's into hellfire. That's where the weeping and gnashing of teeth is, where the fire, fire is never put out. So God had called this servant that did nothing with his talent, wicked and lazy. And sometimes because we don't do our talent, it's because we do not apply ourselves. I have known people that have had very beautiful talents that never did anything with them. And I think, and I, some of them in my own family, I have known people that just really are extremely talented, but never pursued it and taught it, thought of it very lightly. You know what? God has given those talents to us. Anything that God gives us and desires to give us, we should take these things very seriously and use what gifts that he has given us to the best of our ability, because these gifts are given to us to help somebody else. That's what the, all these gifts are all about, is to help one another. You know, the people that have the gift of healing, people will draw, drive for miles to go to their services just to get healed. And people that have other gifts and things, people will draw for miles. This is what causes some of these ministers to get kind of puffed up because yeah. all of a sudden they draw so many crowds and draw so many people. And I think of Reinhard Bakke so many times, and that is the most humble man that I can think of. And he has such a beautiful, beautiful spirit. Millions, millions of people came to his services. As far as the eye could see, there's pictures of his work. As far as you could see, there would be people out there coming. They came for miles just to hear him preach. And you know what? As long as you stay humble before God, God will increase your ministry even more and more. And then increase your abilities more and more. Increase everything that you do in an abundance. You will have an abundance in life. Whenever you learn to be a giver and 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 forget about the things that you have, the wealth that you have. Whenever you learn to give to others, if you were to help, when I say give to others, that is not just speaking of money. That's not just thinking of material things. It's speaking also of a word of encouragement, a prayer said in a timely manner at a right time. These are the kind of things that we can give to one another that does not require any tremendous great gift to us. And I told, I told this person last week, I said, you know what, we all have the ability to encourage and that person is a great encourager I know her well and she is beautiful in encouraging other people sometimes a word of encouragement to someone will turn their whole day around will turn their day around and they will go rejoicing because that word has lifted their spirits and helped them we can all pray for somebody we can always give a word of encouragement we can always tell them hey just keep on keeping on trust God he knows what you, where you are. He knows your name. You know, that is so powerful that Jesus knows every one of us by name. Has ever he spoke to you in the night and called you by name? He has to be. And it's so precious to know that God knows who I am. Yes. He knows my name. He knows my heart. He knows my thoughts. He knows my intents, my motives. He knows everything about me. There's nothing hidden from him. You might as well just do the best you can and do what's right because God knows all about it anyway. Don't try to deceive people because God sees it all. He sees it all. I used to tell little kids when I used to talk, teach Sunday school. And you know, I think I teach, I teach today just like I almost taught them back years ago. I always still tell them, I said, you know, you might find something and you know it belongs to somebody else and because nobody is looking or something you just take it put it in your pocket and maybe nobody knows it your parents don't know it that person doesn't know it but God always sees it God always sees it he always knows everything about us praise the Lord so I have a, that servant was cast into outer darkness now I have another really long scripture that I want to work on next, but it's getting so close to 7 o'clock, I don't think I'll start on it because this is kind of like going on to something something else. Um, this is where Paul is addressing uh, about the spiritual gifts, the Corinthian church, and I want to save this for next week, though. so I'm going to get started on this next week at this point. So I think with that, I'm just going to uh, pray, and if there's anybody who would like prayer tonight, please come forward. I'll pray for you, and I can guarantee you 
I have nothing that's catching that's not good. 